Welcome to this podcast designed to prepare students to master the 2013 Washington State Biology End of Course Assessment, or EOC. I hope that whether you are a student, a parent, or an educator, you'll get a lot out of tuning in. The main goals for this podcast are to, one, become familiar with the types of questions that will be featured on the EOC. Secondly, to closely examine a practice scenario and evaluate where and how points can be earned. And then finally, becoming aware of the common ways to earn points and pitfalls to avoid that might cost students points when answering this type of short answer prompt. So a little bit of background, if you are a student in the class of 2015, you will be required to pass the Biology EOC. However, students in classes of 2013 and 2014 are not required to pass the state exam. So really we're talking about uh, the current uh, sophomores and freshmen that um, are gearing up for this exam in the spring. So a couple uh, details about the types of questions on the EOC. There are three categories of item types. Uh, one are the multiple choice questions. Number two are the completion questions. And then thirdly, the short answer questions. Taken all together, the total point value will be 45 points. The short answer will be 10 of those 45 points, or around 22% of the total exam. So the point of uh, this podcast is to help students understand um, how they can maximize their points on the short answer portion. You can see that the distinguishing features for the short answer are that it requires a response in some form of phrase or sentence, and that uh, these items may ask students to do things like write a conclusion or a procedure or um, solve a technical design problem or other things. The seven short answer item types are listed here. My main focus for this one is uh, to help students understand how to master writing conclusions to get maximum points for the EOC. So I like to use something called word wall, which is basically a short vocabulary list so that um, we can get these definitions understood before we move on. So manipulated variable is uh, commonly known as the independent variable, and it's the thing in the experiment that is intentionally changed to determine a particular effect. The responding variable is also known as the uh, dependent variable, and this is typically what is measured. It's the um, outcome of the experiment, so if the manipulated variable is the cause, then the responding variable is the effect. Quantitative data, uh, the root word is quant as in as a number, or to quantify, and these are data that are uh, number-based. So, for example, you might be measuring height or mass of an organism, and those would be quantitative data. The opposite would be qualitative data, and these would be information that's based on description, for example, color or texture. So in this first uh, scenario that we'll be looking at, we're going to be looking at the, the nature of the EOC prompt. You'll be looking at how it's put together, what is the background information that you provided, and then based on that, what is the question or the item prompt that you're asked to respond to. So in this case, this is a foaming spud scenario, so essentially it's an enzyme question. So they begin with uh, Mike and Kelsey, and they are wanting to investigate how hydrogen peroxide is um, is used in, uh, in the presence of a protein enzyme called catalase. There is a question that's uh, posed, what is the effect of acidity? of potato juice on the volume of foam produced when hydrogen peroxide is added to the potato juice. So acidity is simply the measure of hydrogen ion concentration. The pH scale it ranges from 0 to 14. From 0 to 6.9 is uh, acidic, 7.0 is neutral, and 7.1 to 14 is basic. So the question is, what is the effect of the different levels of the pH range on how well the enzyme catalase produces um, bubbles uh, or foam. In this case, it's the oxygen that's being produced. So you'll be given a scenario that looks like this. The attributes are are explained here. Uh, this is a, a picture taken from uh, Google.com, and basically we have two petri dishes. The petri dish on the left has a, a slice of potato, and it's in water. And in the right petri dish, you have uh, a similar potato chunk that is immersed in hydrogen peroxide or H2O2 and you'll see that the very visible difference is that in the uh, right hand petri dish you'll notice that there's a lot of uh, foaming or bubbles being produced and so the enzyme catalase which is in the the tissue of the potato is being in contact with the peroxide causing oxygen to be released so we're looking at a chemical reaction 
and um, the question is how does the level of acidity in that right hand petri dish affect the amount of foaming whether it's more or less so this is the scenario that was given in the practice scenario they have a uh, beaker of the hydrogen peroxide so that would be the substrate or the thing that the enzyme catalase is working on and then each of the P uh, the um, graduated cylinders you have potato juice ranging from a pH of 6 which is the uh, lowest on that scale to a pH of 9 you'll notice that uh, pH 7 is the neutral so we have two basic solutions and we have one acidic solution and the question is when we add the peroxide what is the effect how much foaming or production of oxygen is going to be produced so in this uh, item uh, type the uh, procedure will be given so you have a sense of what the experimenters um, will be doing and then this is the data that is being produced this is the chart that's been given you'll see on the left we have the range of the manipulated variable which is the pH from 6 to 9 you'll notice that they've done three trials and then they've averaged those three trials which are featured in the right hand column so at pH 6 the average uh, volume of foam was 24 milliliters and on the um, high end uh, of that range we have a pH of 9 that produced 30 milliliters of foam I like to look at things kind of in a graphical way so you could look at a graph like this and you could see the trend so you'll notice that it's um, increasing more foam is being produced as it goes from pH 6 to 7 and from 7 to 8 but then after pH 8 the volume of foam decreases so if we're looking at the absolute maximum value of of the foam that would be uh, 42 milliliters that corresponds to pH of 8 so when you're answering this kind of question you want to make sure that you're looking at the trend not only from the minimum to the maximum of the manipulated variable in this case pH but you also want to make sure that you understand what is the behavior of the responding variable so in this case how much foam is being produced so more on this a little bit later so this is the the prompt that you'll see you'll be given an area of, uh, of lines to write on you'll be given the the ex exact uh, attributes that you're looking for in this case answer the experimental question include supporting data explain how these data support your conclusion and then lastly provide a scientific scientific explanation for the trend so what is going on biologically that explains this trend so as we score this you'll notice that there are five item attributes these are things that the scorers will be looking for and you'll notice that the score points maximize at two so there are different ways to get your two points you could lose one of the attribute points for example if you fail to write the scientific explanation but you get all the other attributes you could score a four out of five attributes and still earn the the two points so you don't have to be perfect to get the the maximum score points but you certainly want to try your best so we're going to work through various uh, scenarios and looking at student responses and how their responses matched up with item attributes and then how would we score those so in terms of the first attribute the conclusive statement really is did you answer the experimental question so originally the question was what is the effect of, uh, of acidity on the volume of foam that was produced so did you answer that based on the data that was shown some common reasons that students might miss this point is first of all writing an unclear conclusion you have to say clearly descriptively definitively either yes no or we're not sure uh, writing an incorrect conclusion so if you come up with the wrong outcome based on the data when you compare it to the hypothesis then you could lose this point if you don't include the conclusion at all you omitted it or if you say one thing and then later on you contradict yourself and say something else and so you want to make sure that you're being consistent the second attribute and the third attribute would be the two data points. Uh, the really the the hallmark of science is its ability to ask good questions, develop ways to test them, figure out ways to collect data, and then use the data to infer what the outcome of the experiment is. And so, an experiment without the data it is very very incomplete. So you have to be comfortable with looking at the data and, and trying to interpret what do the data mean. So did you describe the entire range of conditions tested? Well, what does this mean? It means that the low end of the manipulated variable all the way up to the high end of the manipulated variable. So in this scenario, we have a pH of 6, which is the low end 
or you could say it's the high end if you think about the the acidity level, higher acidity level, pH 6 and pH 9. Um, but in this sense, the low is pH 6 and high is pH 9 if you go numerically. And then did you also describe the response to those ranges? So for example, at pH 6, what was the, the volume of foam? And at pH 9, what was the volume of foam? So make sure that you get that lowest and highest. So I tell my students, make sure that you bookend uh, your description of the data. If the manipulated variable is only described in a qualitative sense, then just describe the range of the responding variable. So what do we see happening? The explanatory language is the next attribute. Did you describe how the data are supported or are they connected or compared to the conclusive statement? So if you said that the hypothesis was, was contradicted or was incorrect, did you explain how that's true? So how does the data show that the outcome of the hypothesis, the conclusion was incorrect or correct. So common ways to earn this point is you compare the entire range of the manipulated variable with the responding variable, or you rephrase the correct conclusive statement, or you comment on the high and low value for the RV data. So you can see that there's various ways to earn the points, and so there's not a single right answer, but you definitely want to be discussing the connection between what the outcome of the experiment is whether it's right, wrong, or you're not sure, with the data. Can you prove with the data your outcome? Common reasons that students miss this point is they did not include at least one numeric value, whether it's pH 6 producing 24 milliliters of, of foam or pH 9 producing 30, uh, simply copying the conclusive statement or incorrectly quoting any of the data. So if, for example, you said that pH 6, the volume of foam was at 32, then you misquoted the data. So you have to make sure that you carefully compare what you're writing to what the data show in the data table. And then lastly, the scientific explanation. So did you describe a possible or a plausible scientific reason that explains this trend as the data show in the chart? So common ways to earn this point are, are to describe how the activity of the enzyme is affected by its environment. So we understand that uh, enzymes are very, very important molecules. They, they make sure that the chemistry in your cells and your body work the way that it should, but they are affected by their environment. Um, so this really is a question of how does pH affect that environment. So if you understand that, that a low pH, which is a high acidity level, for example, 6, 5, 4 on the pH scale, damage the enzyme, then the enzyme will actually denature or fall apart and no longer be able to do its job. Do you also describe maybe a different way of saying the same thing where at, at neutral value, at pH 7, the enzymes are most active, they're, they're least affected, they're not denatured at pH 7, or that you can say in general that acids and bases denature enzymes and that describes the trend that we see. So here's a two-point response. You'll see that this student had written um, as follows. So in this investigation, the prediction that if the acidity of potato juice is decreased, then the volume of foam was increased was proven incorrect. So in that first instance, they made a very, very clear conclusive statement. They said that the hypothesis was wrong. They, they go on to say that the catalase is damaged by the acid. So in this way, they're doing their uh, scientific uh, explanation. And then they go on to describe the data points. So the lowest volume of foam was 24 milliliters with the highest acidity of pH 6. However, the highest volume of foam was an average of 42 milliliters with the second lowest acidity level being pH 8. The third highest volume was 35 milliliters with the second highest acidity level of pH 7. And then the second lowest uh, foam volume was 30 milliliters with the lowest acidity level of pH 9. So they went through each of those different levels from pH 6 to pH 9 and related those or matched them with their responding variable. So in this case, they've answered the conclusive question. They've included at least two supporting data points, in this case actually more than that, and then they explained scientifically what might be the cause for this trend. So this will be earning a total of five attributes or a maximum of two points. In this one point response you'll see that the the information is uh, not complete as in the first scenario. So in conclusion the acidity of potato juice does affect the volume of foam produced but in this case the 
specific outcome was not clear. So they were a bit vague in answering this question. When there is more potato juice, the volume of foam increases, but at one point the volume of potato juice starts to decline once again. A beaker with pH of 6 of potato juice had an average of only 24 um, uh, foam volume, and the one with 9 pH had a volume of 30. And then they go on to describe the one with 8 pH of having the highest volume of 42. So if we look at how this scores, again, they had a vague conclusive statement. They were given points for the supporting data of pH 6 on the low side and pH 9 on the high side. They did uh, explain the connection between the pH value of 6 and the average volume of foam. Um, but they did refer to the pH of 8, so they did get credit, even though they didn't explain anything uh, more completely like that. They mentioned nothing about the effect of um, acids and bases on enzymes, so they received no points for that. So they rece received a score of 3 out of 5 attributes, which would be 1 out of 2 score points. This is a zero-point response, and you'll see here that really not much of um, value is being added by the student. If we look at the way that the um, item is scored. If we look at the zero point response um, rubric, we'll see that, that while there is a conclusive statement, it is incorrect. There was no reference to pH 6 values. And for pH 9, there was um, likewise an incorrect conclusive statement. No explanatory language and no scientific explanation. So as we wrap this up, some takeaways, make sure that you answer the experimental question. Supported means that the hypothesis uh, was correct as far as the data are concerned. Uh, contradicted would mean that they were um, wrong. And then not supported would be that gray area where it's really too close to tell if it's right or wrong. And sometimes that is appropriate. Uh, you have to include supporting data, the high value um, and low value MVs compared to the high and low values of the responding variable. Explain how the data supports your conclusion. So you're going to match your, your conclusion, supported, not supported, or contradicted with the data, and then provide a scientific explanation for the trend. So in this case, enzymes are affected by acids and bases, particularly high and low pH values are not good for, for most enzymes. The trend, how does the data for the responding variable respond or change over the range of levels? So you saw that sort of hump-shaped line from pH 6 to pH 8, and then it dropped to pH 9. Did you describe that? And then did you write a complete comparison that includes both the manipulated variable and the responding variable? So if you do these things, then I think you'll be in good shape for writing uh, conclusions for the EOC. Here are a few resources that you may want to look into. These are what I used as I prepared this podcast. Thanks so much for joining in. You saw, number one, that the short answer conclusion item has five attributes, and you must score four of them to earn maximum points. You saw that three sample student responses were given, each of which earned various scores from zero to two points, and these were based on how well they matched the rubric. And then lastly, you learned how to avoid simple mistakes that might cost you points when responding to this item type. Please feel free to direct any comments or questions to me at the email address provided on the screen. And good luck, and I hope this helped.